Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today at Jersey Mike's Arena on the campus of Rutgers University to welcome the next head coach of the Scarlet Knights women's basketball program. A special thank you to our partners at Big Ten Network, who are broadcasting today's press conference live. For today's run of show, we will hear from Rutgers Director of Athletics, Pat Hobbs, and Rutgers University President, Jonathan Holloway. Then Mr. Hobbs will introduce head coach, Coquise Washington, who will have an opening statement, followed by a question and answer segment with our media. If you wish to ask a question, please raise your hand and wait for one of our two microphones. We ask that you please identify yourself by name and affiliation. The Q&A will conclude the televised portion of the day. Following photos on the stage, Coach Washington and Mr. Hobbs will then be available on the floor for a breakout media session until 4 p.m. We thank you again for joining us today. And now, Rutgers Director of Athletics, Pat Hobbs. Thank you, Matt. So it is uh, great to see all of you on another historic day for Rutgers University and Rutgers Athletics. Uh, I see we've had a lot of our coaches are here, a lot of folks from the athletic department, our season ticket holders, cagers, club uh, members, uh, and importantly, some, some guests here from the University of Notre Dame. So welcome to you. Uh, before I talk uh, about Coach and, and the journey here to the banks, I do want to say a few thanks. Uh, first, a uh, very big thanks to Collegiate Sports Solutions, uh, who was the search firm that assisted us on this, led by Jeff Schemmel and Debbie Yao, longtime AD and former women's basketball coach. Uh, thank you for all of your help uh, as we um, went through this search process. Also, from my internal team, Ryan Pizzeri, Andrew Cappers, Mike Zuhl, Macaul Giovanni, Kate Hickey, and Haseem Phillips. Um, tremendous help from all of them. Please uh, give them a round of applause. I also uh, want to make sure that on this day, uh, and I know Coach Washington joins me in saying a very special thank you to Coach C. Vivian Stringer on an extraordinary tenure, not just in 25 years here at Rutgers, but in 50 years of coaching basketball. Let's hear it for Coach C. Vivian Stringer. And we will have a very special celebration next year, uh, date to be determined, contest to be determined, where uh, we will celebrate. We'll have C. Vivian Stringer Day here uh, in Jersey Mike's Arena, and it'll give all of us an opportunity to really show our appreciation for Coach Stringer. As you all know, uh, this court, uh, which is below us, will be forever named the C. Vivian Stringer Court at Jersey Mike's Arena, and that'll be a special moment as well for Coach Stringer. Also, yeah, let me give that a round of applause, absolutely. I also want, want to mention uh, somebody else, and, and I spoke to Coach Stringer through the search, but I also spoke with her predecessor, Coach Teresa Grentz, uh, another Hall of Famer, actually long overdue Hall of Famer, but uh, now in the Hall of Fame. And uh, uh, Coach Grentz and Coach Stringer uh, both are delighted uh, with Coach Washington now coming to the banks. Very unusual in 50 years, uh, well, not quite 50 years, but uh, in 40 years, to have only three coaches, um, our third joining us today. And I think it says something extraordinary about women's basketball here at Rutgers. Uh, and so uh, we couldn't be happier about uh, what we're all involved in uh, today. Uh, I do want to start, though, um, because it's not just Coach Washington that joins the Rutgers family today, but three very special people who are sitting here in front of me, her husband, Raynell Brown. Raynell, welcome. Her son, Quentin, and her, her daughter, Raina. Now, Raina, I'm told you're almost like a coach on the floor, a coach in the stands. So I, I think I'm gonna also offer you the job of volunteer assistant today, uh, but not just in women's basketball. I think you're the volunteer assistant to the AD. So we're gonna be checking out a lot of programs because we've got a lot going on here. So you up for that task? Absolutely, she said yes. 
That's the second yes I got. That's good. Now, you, you look at Coquise Washington's record, and there's not a lot of people you can say this about. She's literally done it all. She has done it all. In the sport of women's basketball, Coach Washington has done it all, starting with her time as a student athlete at Notre Dame, uh, where she started at Notre Dame uh, and led that team to success. But we're not just talking on the court. Right? We're also talking in the classroom because she didn't just get one degree from the University of Notre Dame, her undergraduate degree, but she went on to get a law degree. And you all know how much I love lawyers. <laughs> so pretty happy about that. Uh, and then went on to a spectacular WNBA career where she won a championship in the WNBA and then was there at the founding and the first president of the WNBA Players Association. Then back into coaching and what she'll tell you is that wasn't something she really saw herself doing. Uh, but then when Muffet McGraw reached out and said, you know, I think this is for you, she went back to Notre Dame, had spectacular time as an assistant coach there winning a national championship. Uh, and then um, getting picked uh, to go over to Penn State, where she had extraordinary success, three-time conference champion, three-time conference coach of the year, uh, extraordinary record of success. And so you can say about Coach Washington, she's done it all. And why is that important? That's important because for the young women who choose to come here and play for the Scarlet Knights, they have a role model walking in the door. They can look to her and say, there are many paths that I can take, um, be it in the WNBA, be it uh, in some activity, maybe even as a lawyer following uh, my time playing as a, as a, as a student athlete. Uh, and that's what we're about, right? That's what the collegiate athletic experience is about, is a young woman from Flint, Michigan, goes to Notre Dame, and the rest is sort of um, all the wonderful things that happen, uh, and now we get her to come here to the banks. And so when she and her staff go into a house and say to mom and dad and family, we're going to really take great care of your young woman, your daughter, when she comes to Rutgers University, um, I know that they'll sit across and they'll say, maybe my daughter can be as good uh, or as successful as Coach Coquise Washington uh, one day. And that's why... I am so delighted to welcome Coach Coquise Washington to the banks. Welcome, Coach. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the president of Rutgers University, Jonathan Holloway. Good, good afternoon, everybody. It is a thrill, truly a thrill to be here. When uh, Pat talked to me about this search and how the process so and so was going to, you know, pull in candidates, some formal, some informal, it all sounded fine to me. And then probably it happened quickly, maybe a week and a half later, it got some names and starts to, to um, I want to tell you about a few of them. They're going to be visiting campus soon. That's fine, Pat. Tell me about this. Tell me about these candidates. And he starts talking about somebody and. Uh, who had this incredible athletic career. I'm like, that's, that's great, I would expect that. Who won some national championships. I'm like, okay, that's great too. Who went on to play professionally. I'm like, that's wonderful. Who organized, organized was the president of the Players Association. I'm like, yeah, keep going. You know, Big Ten Coach of the Year. So all these accolades you just heard, all these accomplishments. I'm like, um, Pat? will you please be serious and get to an actual candidate? Because this made up unicorn you talked about, that's great. But I actually want to hear, I'm busy, Pat. <laughs> and, and he goes, no, her name's Coquise Washington and she's the associate head coach at Notre Dame. I'm like, okay, now this got interesting. Not only are we gonna be interviewing somebody who has all these incredible accomplishments, but we will actually get to beat Notre Dame. So that feels good too. <laughs> Not that I have anything against Notre Dame. <laughs> but I must say, all, all joking aside, um, it is quite remarkable to the, to the players here from Notre Dame that you're here. I just learned about your presence about 10 seconds before I walked to the podium. No, after I was sitting up on the stage with you. Because I did notice somebody was not on brand. There was some color thing going on. 
But very seriously, think about this. Um, these athletes, these scholar athletes, have such a profound connection to a person that it connects through the university, absolutely, all, all great respect. Notre Dame is an excellent institution, but it is transcendent as well, that you are here for your coach. So that you, we now have a coach, I'm not saying we didn't, let me be clear, reporters, but we have a coach, we have hired a coach who will maintain the tradition of incredible, fervent, powerful connections to her players in ways that Pat already talked about that are really quite important. It's not just about excellence on the court. We all fully expect excellence on the court. We want more banners hung in Jersey Mike's arena. We want to actually have to expand the arena because we run out of places to put the banners. But we also want a coach who's going to forge lifelong connections with her players. That 10 years after they finish playing with her, they can reach back for advice and she'll give them exactly what she needs to know. She'll make the connections for them for whatever they need for what their next career adventure. When you become part of the Rutgers athletic family, my aspiration, Pat's aspiration, is that you are not just part of that family for two, three, four, five years. You're part of this family forever because Rutgers is building athletes who are prepared to be competitive in any venture in any area, and they're going to excel in any area. In Coquise, Washington, we have someone based on only on her resume, and then from all the raves I've heard, people who've met her already, we have somebody who's already on mission, who already knows that that's the expectation and is going to execute upon that plan. I've told Pat when I was coming in as the president, look, I wanna win every game, of course I do, but I only wanna win the right way. And winning the right way is about forging these deep connections that tran transcend time and place, that will inspire former players to come back to see you transition to a new space maybe because you meant so much to them. I wanna make sure that we have coaches who understand as much as we wanna win on the court, we will win in the classroom, we will be academically excellent, and we will win in future careers. We've got that coach, and I could not be more excited. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking on this responsibility and ushering in the next great era of women's basketball at Rutgers. Thank you. And now it is my pleasure to welcome to the podium our new women's basketball coach, Coach Coquise Washington. Thank you, thank you, please. I'm not usually an overly emotional person, um, but I have to admit my heart is in my throat right now um, at the reception from everybody here at Rutgers and in particular from Nat, Dara, and Olivia who surprised me and um, came walking down and I'm looking up and I'm like, that looks just like Nat, that is Nat Marshall. And um, it's just, so awesome that you guys came out. It means a lot to me and um, love you guys to death and, and appreciate it. Um, I just want to say, first of all, just thank you to Pat Hobbs, to President Holloway, the Board of Governors, the Board of Trustees, the Cagers Club, to the entire Rutgers athletic family. The last 24 hours, um, has been an incredible outpouring of connection, an incredible outpouring of giving to me and my family, um, opening their arms and welcoming us to this community. And I could not be more thrilled to, to join this place. Listening to President Holloway talk is exactly why I'm here. 
the mission of Rutgers Athletics and Rutgers University completely aligns with who I am as a person and who I am as a coach and who I plan to be for this team and this athletic department. And that's a person who is going to pour into our student athletes in every way imaginable so that whatever dreams, goals, and aspirations they have for their life, we can partner with them to help them achieve that. And that's certainly going to include some wins because apparently we got to build this building out and make it bigger to hold more banners. Um, but it's more importantly about who they are as people and what their dreams, goals, and aspirations are for themselves beyond basketball. Being at Rutgers is an unbelievable privilege. Um, following in the, in the steps of Teresa Grintz and Coach Stringer, both of whom I know, and their legacy and the impact and imprint they've had on not just Rutgers, but women's basketball, the history of the game. Um, it's inspiring to see how they have impacted so many lives outside of their teams. So many coaches across the country can owe their success and their growth and their opportunities to be in this profession because of what Coach Grants and, and Coach Stringer did for women's basketball. So I'm honored, I'm honored to stand on their shoulders, build on the legacy that they created, and um, hope to be around here as long as they were, because apparently we don't have these press conferences too often. So. <laughs> So I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be a part of the Rutgers family. And I'm looking forward to enjoying a tre tremendous amount of success, both on and off the court, and um, representing this university and this program in a way that this community deserves and expects. So thank you. Thank you, Coach. Mel, I fully expected you to ask the first question. I'm stuck with it now after <laughs> last year. So April 30th, beyond the news of Vivian herself, the words out, Rutgers is open. Which way did the lake go on? Did you start thinking about it, or did they come knocking and you were just happy at the time and you'd still be at the alma mater? Uh, well, how did the ball get rolling? Yeah, when, when Coach Stringer retired, I announced her retirement, I think like, most coaches um, across the country, you know, you were just like, wow, a legend has, you know, left the building. And it was just, you know, my heart went out uh, with so much appreciation for what she meant to me personally. Um, coaching in the Big Ten, um, you know, Coach Stringer and I, I got the pleasure of coaching, it, coaching against her a couple times. And she's always giving nuggets. And she's always, you know, after the game, she'll give me a hug and um, give me uh, advice, you know, and, and not even so much advice, but encouragement, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Um, so I didn't really think about who's gonna follow Coach Stringer or anything like that. It just is one of those organic things that, that kind of happens. Um, and so when I got the call, um, I thought, wow, okay, this is, this is a place that I will actually think about um, considering having conversations and considering being, being here. Tom Canavan, AP. Following up on that, there's an old cliche 
never replace a legend. Right. How do you approach coming in and how do you set your own mm -hmm. agenda? Well, you said it. You can't replace a legend. I mean, it's just, it's just not possible. So I'm not trying to replace anybody. I've been inspired by Coach Stringer over my career. I've been enthused by who she is and the legacy that she's left. So I'm not trying to replace her. Um, I'm just trying to build on what she taught and what she meant. I mean, and the reality is like we're two different people. We came from two, two different eras. Um, I don't think, you know, Coach Stringer listens to the baby, you know? <laughs> you might hear it in my car, I don't know. So we're gonna do things different. But what's gonna be consistent is the, the determination to be excellent, the determination to give to your players, the, the importance of building those relationships as Pat and as President Holloway talked about, that lasts a lifetime. And when you look at Coach Stringer's legacy, most people look at the championships but what's really impressive is when you go to the Final Four and you see how many of her former players, whether they were Cheney or Iowa or Rutgers, come together and celebrate Coach Stringer, that's what's impressive. And I, again, I don't plan to try to replace her. I just want to um, be somebody that she will look at and say, you know, you did a good job, kid. Following behind me, you did a good job. Hi, Coach. Steve Politi from NGA.com. Uh, I think when people look at your track record and your resume at, at Penn State, they see very successful first seven years and a drop-off mm -hmm. in the last five. Yeah. I'm curious if you can tell us what happened in those last five and what lessons you might have learned about that as you go into your second job. Well, I tell you, the, the lessons that I learned have a lot to do with, um, with is, is, is dealing with things that happen outside your program that, you know, that, that can be detrimental. You know, so um, things that happen that you, you don't necessarily know are going to be as impactful as they are. Um, at the same time that we were going through all that. I think one thing we learned is how important stability and leadership is and how important that you have to have that kind of um, steadiness in, in an administration, that kind of steadiness. And those, those things are important. And so when you're going through um, a crisis of that sort, a change in leadership, a change in and energy at the top is, is to be expected. And, you know, I thought that we um, did a good job as, as a staff of maintaining through a lot of instability, a lot of um, just uneasiness and uncertainty. And, um, you know, I think those are the things that you learn is the ability to be adaptable, the ability to be fluid and, and to maintain and manage through that kind of level of, of adversity. Hi, Coach. I'm uh, Patrick Lanny from NJ.com as well. Um, I just wanted to know, from your perspective, what's your assessment of the current roster and what are your short-term goals to address any issues you might see? That's a great question. I can probably answer it a little bit better, maybe 48 hours after I've been hired, maybe not in the 24. Um, I've had a, one conversation with our team, um, and I'm excited about their energy and their passion for Rutgers. They love this place. They love the university. They love the program, so I'm excited about that. Um, like I think most programs across the country, when you look at the transfer portal, rosters are in a flux right now. So it's a little premature to speak on the roster at this point because it's, it's just not, it's not complete, it's not solid. Um, so I'm not, I'm not ready to really compl comment on that. And I think that's across the board. I think it's gonna be a few more weeks before rosters anywhere are really complete.
uh, Chris Eisman, Bergen record. I guess kind of jumping off of that too, what's your next steps, your, your priorities that you feel like you need to get accomplished mm -hmm. over these next few days and weeks as you kind of take on this challenge? Well, the first thing is to get our staff in place and to make sure that we have the people in place that are ready to serve our student athletes. So that's, that's the first thing. And if that's 1A, 1B is what I just talked about is trying to finalize the roster and, and make sure that's complete moving into the start of the fall. The obvious question the fans will want to know is when are you going back to the NCAA tournament? <laughs> oh, when are we going back to the NCAA tournament? When do you want to go back to the NCAA tournament? You tell me. Soon? Okay. Soon. That's the answer. Soon. Well, I'd just like to say again, thank you. It's been such a warm welcome. Um, I'm excited to be here, looking forward to getting started, and um, go RU. Thank you.